Thank you, everybody. And for those that are joining us uh, online and didn't catch that, hi, I'm JT. I, my, my role is a little bit weird at Microsoft. My role is developer engagement lead, which basically means I go out and talk to developers about building cool stuff on Azure. And that's kind of what I do all day, every day. So uh, if you were Melbourne-based, you would see me at a lot of meetups. Uh, if I was Auckland-based, you would see me at a lot of meetups. Um, and I cruise around and, and talk to our customers as well and sort of try to get people interested and excited and enabled to be able to, to be able to build cool stuff. So I will prefix this by saying I'm a little bit nervous because given, given the COVID situation, <laughs> I haven't done a public present, like an actual public presentation with real life meat in the room um, for about two and a half years. So I'm like, ah. and that coupled with the fact that uh, I built a lot of this uh, yesterday and today. Um, there's no slides. There's not going to be any li live coding because I'm not going to tempt the demo gods. Um, but what I am going to show you is it's maybe not the, the sexiest of demos, um, but this is something that I use in, in real life every single day. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we have on offer uh, for our customers and our partners at Microsoft is something called the Cloud Skills Challenge. And if you've, you've dropped into Microsoft Build, uh, which was two weeks ago now, I think, um, you, you may have seen that. You may have worked for a customer that's run one. Basically, what it does is it takes Microsoft Learn um, as the learning platform and it puts a competition layer over the top of it um, so that you can compete with each other to earn prizes, glory, um, and, and that sort of thing while, while learning along the way. And so I, part of my role is, is getting these set up and managed um, for our customers and our partners. And I had to keep track of these. And so I did what everybody does when they start to keep track of something. I created an Excel spreadsheet. And I had this Excel spreadsheet that had customer X da, 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 and their details. And then as I sort of worked through it a bit more and needed to have some more visibility and some collaboration from other people, I was like, all right, cool. How do I make a, a list that's a bit more terrible than an Excel spreadsheet? And I uttered the, the scary words that I, I swore I'd never utter, which is, I should create a SharePoint list. Um, no, I hope no one from the SharePoint team at Microsoft has tuned into this because I'll get fired and then probably not get my flight home. Um, so I created this list on SharePoint, which um, has some really basic, basic details attached to it. So you can see here, um, I've got uh, a status of awaiting details for my challenge. I've got a customer that's attached to Jeff's IT Co. Jeff is my, uh, my default name that I use for absolutely everything. Uh, I did a version of this presentation once and accidentally exposed some customer data on a, on a very grainy screen and I got in a lot of trouble for it. So this is all demo data. Um, I've tagged as FY23. The advantage that SharePoint gave me was that I can sort of have a little bit more control so that not everything's free text like it is on Excel. Uh, I've got Jeff as my champion. Jeff weirdly has my personal email address as his email address. I don't know what that's about. We know that he came through the website. We know he's a customer and he's owned inside of Microsoft by Michael Watson, who's actually the React Elite. So Michael would never, never do this. But so that's, that's my list. Um, the advantage that having that in SharePoint gave me is one of the things that I have to do once I've briefed a customer on this is the cloud skills challenge and this is how it works is I then go back to them and go, all right, fill in the details of what you want your challenge to look like. Is it going to be um, a, a collection of content? Is it going to be experience-based? When do you want it to start? When do you want it to finish? How many people do you think you'll have? What's the funky title that you'll give it? What's the interesting description that you'll give it? Um, peek behind the scenes. The title that everybody picks is always the customer name, Cloud Skills Challenge, uh, no matter how uh, interesting I try to get them to make it. So I needed a way to capture that. And what I leaned into uh, straight off the bat was Power Platform because while I am a dev, I was like, I don't want to burn a huge amount of time on this. I just want to get it up, have a website that I can throw in front of a customer. They can fill it in. I'll get a notification that they filled it in and then I can go and create the challenge for them. Um, so I created this uh, a, a table in uh, Dataverse, which is the, the sort of the data component of Power Platform. Uh, and you can see here that this is actually already pre-filled with Jeff's details. The way that that works is I have this fairly epic looking uh, flow, uh, power flow, power flow, yes, um, which when an item is modified in my SharePoint list, uh, this is triggered 
it goes and checks, uh, do we have the information that we need? And I think the information is, there we go, the organisation name, the organisation email, the first name of the customer, and what's that one? And have we already given them an options form? Um, so for all of those conditions are met, we then go and uh, list up the, the rows, matching them on a criteria from the SharePoint list. And then we either add a new row to say, we're gonna create this options record where I'm gonna capture options. And if we don't, um, if I've changed some stuff in the SharePoint list, we'll go and update the existing item. And then that feeds into uh, a Power Apps form. And this thing is, is kind of cool. Like it's drag and drop um, without, without a bunch of the evilness that usually happens with drag and drop. This actually produces um, a meaningful website. So if I jump back into my list, what you'll see is that this options URL has been populated. So the flow, once it's created the options, it goes and creates the underlying URL. Um, and I can then flick that out to a customer and go, hey, Jeff, uh, we're ready to go for your Cloud Skills Challenge. Please fill in your options here. Um, and then Jeff clicks on that link and gets this. And so he can go in and, and fill in all the, the details that I need to be able to create the challenge for him. And then there's another data flow in the background where I get an email that says, hey, Jeff's filled in these details. He's ready to go, um, at which point I find some some time in the day to, to go and spin up the, the challenge for that. So what we're getting, that's the reason I whipped through that really fast is that's not actually what I'm here to talk to you about today. Mm -hmm. um, that's the background of, of how this kind of started as a row in an Excel sheet to a SharePoint list to a bunch of power platform hanging off, uh, off the back of that. So I am going to... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm actually going to go and create, oops, wrong one. I'm going to go create a cloud skills challenge for Jeff based on the, we'll assume that he put some details in. Uh, oh, that's expecting a, I don't know what Michael's, I'm just going to put, I reckon he's, if I had to guess, he's michael.watson at microsoft.com. And I've got a comma in my email address. I have the vomited. I'm going to call this F's Awesome Cloud Skill Challenge. I'm typing something interesting here. We're going to put him in, oh, Auckland time, of course. Uh, his challenge is going to start next week. It's going to run, he's only going to run it for a week, I think. And no, we don't need rules. We are going to primary country. I've got to scroll further down than I normally scroll. Come on, come on. Why is it not called A New Zealand? Participant type is going to be, I'm just going to call this event because I think that lets me, I oh know that doesn't let me do what I want to do. I'm going to call it Microsoft Internal. Ha ha. XP growth. Uh, it's going to be solo. Yes, I want people to sign up to my newsletter. Uh, this is a test. Review. Yep, looks good. You can tell by how thoroughly I reviewed it. So that goes and creates my Cloud Skills Challenge. I'm going to copy the URL for that. Uh, well, there's one I created earlier. Let's get rid of that. And there's my original spreadsheet. Let's also get rid of that. Oh, I don't want to save details. Uh, and what I'm going to do is over on this screen, I will go into, I will show you this in a minute. I've just got to make sure that I don't, don't do anything super naughty. Hide and show me, let me filter that. So nothing naughty is exposed. And then I can drag that onto this screen and say, okay, here's my list. Uh, this is Jeff's. I'm going to go in and edit Jeff's record now. And I'm going to say I've created his challenge URL. So I'm just going to paste that in from where I copied that before. And I'm going to set this to challenge setup. Um, so we build out a toolkit that we give to our, our customers and partners, which has invite emails 
um, challenge commentary emails, end of challenge emails, instructional videos, a whole bunch of stuff that we bundle up and then go, here you go, run it with this. This is this will hold your hand all the way through and at the end I'll come back and we'll, we'll figure out who we're going to send uh, goodies to. Um, and that was very time-consuming um, because I would just sit there and I would, like, type an email, oh, dear Jeff, your challenge, here is your toolkit and drag that and drag that and drag that into a zip file and customise it and push it out. And so I was kind of like, oh, I, surely I can make this easier. Uh, turns out I can. Um, we've got a couple of things here. I've got to refresh this one because I've got to log back in with that. Oh, no, it's not going to log in. See, this is why I didn't do live coding. Yeah, that looks like me. While that logs in. So I was sort of already had done a bunch of the... the um, the first lot of automation in Power Platform and Flow. And I was like, oh, I'm still probably not super interested in getting my hands dirty. So uh, I dug into Logic Apps um, to do this other bit because I knew that there were, there were some bits that Flow was not going to handle particularly well for me. Um, so here I am. So now when I get uh, an updated item on that list... Uh, what happens is, is I go and I go and grab a bunch of variables. So I go and grab the challenge URL and some other information about the challenge. And so these are all just setting all these purple ones are just setting variables. And then we check whether we're so we've got another check. So I want to check that it's challenge set up, uh, and I want to check a bunch of other things. So I want to check that there's actually a customer attached to it because the original idea of this was I was going to get other people in Microsoft. Uh, to talk to their customers and man manage the list. And that, that never eventuated, um, although that will be happening very soon, much to other people in Microsoft's dismay, I think. Um, but at the moment, sort of, I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of this management myself. So we go and check that a whole bunch of data that we need exists. Uh, and if it does, then what we do is we're, we're already, I'm already inside a Microsoft Azure tenant at this point. I can then reach out to that Dataverse uh, data store inside of Power Platform and I can go and grab their option details. So I go and request it based on the ID that's come through. Um, and then this is where I get to do some really, really kind of cool stuff. So uh, I created a, a base zip file that is the template for all toolkits that are going out and I dump that into Azure Storage. So the first thing we do is we go and grab this master toolkit, do not delete in all, cap let, all caps, uh, and we, we can cat in the a whole bunch of stuff. We grab the title and then we suffix it with underscore toolkit and make it really, you know, readable. Um, and so I copy that for the specific customer. And I could do, do other stuff there. There's, this is an older version of this where it doesn't do... Um, a bunch of internal customizations, but I could unzip that and, and swap in my own variables and that sort of thing. And then all I do is copy it. And if it already exists, I override it just in case I update the toolkit at some point. The customer is always going to have the newest version. Uh, I then go and in another step, I grab the blob path and I generate uh, a string. And if you've seen, actually, let's just uh, let's just do it rather than me say, if you've seen, I will show you. So if you come into, that's the wrong one. It's going to be this one. Come on, Azure. This will be so much faster when you guys get a data centre uh, early next year on shore. Um, there's my data centre plug. Any second now. Okay. So if I jump in here and have a look at, so these are my, my containers inside of a storage account. Um, one of the things that I can do if I jump into, actually let me go into the storage browser perhaps, and I go blob containers, toolkit. So there's all the toolkits that I've created. And what I can choose to do, if I click on that, uh, I can, where's it gone? It's gone. They've moved my cheese. 
Anyway, I can generate. <laughs> that was a terrible demo, wasn't it? Um, I don't know where it's gone. Oh, hang on. Is it here? Generate SAS. That's what I'm looking for. So I can actually generate a secure access key um, for that blob so I can keep it private for everybody. And then I can put a bunch of details around it um, so that only the particular customer can access it. So they'll get a URL which has uh, start, time, start and end times. It'll have a key attached to it. Um, it'll have read-only permissions, that sort of thing, so that if that email somehow gets into the wrong... And, like, if you want to steal a toolkit for a cloud skills challenge, just send me an email. I'll give you one. Like, they're not, there's nothing super secret in there, but... You know, for a real world, I wanted to keep this relatively secure because I think the worst thing that everybody does is goes, oh, security is not important. We'll worry about it later. Um, and then the world catches on fire. Um, so we generate that that secure secure token. I'm making sure that it's HTTPS at a bare minimum. Um, so I can generate that as part of my logic app. I put an end date in it so that once the their challenge expires, the blob expires, I can then have my storage policy come and clean that up uh, afterwards as well, which I should probably do because I think that, that uh, folder is getting a little bit full. Um, we start it from as soon as, as soon as they've, um, as soon as this executes. And then we go and create a landing page. So I've got a bunch of pre ready to go content where we create a landing page for them. I do some real, this is, this is horrifying and I'm sorry, this, this actually probably should have been code, but, oh, it's not there. What the, what the what? Uh, I don't know what's going on there, but we go and sub out some variables. It done, basically does some find and replace. There's some very secure uh, tokens that I've put in. It's basically stuff with double underscores at the start of it. So I replace those. And then I feed all of that into this other, other composer. So this is the, the chance to bring all of these bits together. Oh, no, here it is. Sorry, that's getting the content. We grab these variables, feed them in, and then we do this monstrosity, which I hope that's coming through clear because I know we've had some, some text size problems, but that's, that's quite long and this interface is not ideal for it. But I'm just doing a bunch of base 64 replace i keep going i keep going how are we doing for time i saw the beers being put out so i don't want to scroll for too long but you're kind of getting an idea that there's a lot of content there so i populate all of that into their template and then i'll stop i'll stop i'm getting the getting the signal from the back of the room uh we create a landing page so i then put that content into its own own blob so i've grabbed html content replace put it in its own blob. We're then going to generate access again. So again, I'm using that SAS um, or sh shared access security system to create a unique URL that's that's got a few restrictions around it. And then once that's done, uh, I go and go and grab that, uh, that URI to say uh, the toolkit's ready and I, I grab a, a different bit of content, so a different HTML file which you'll see what I'm going to do with in a minute. Now, the next thing that I want to do, so I've generated a landing page, I've generated the toolkit, I've plugged that in so it links through from one to the other. What I then need to do is send that to the customer. And ultimately what I want to do is I want to get whoever from Microsoft is managing that relationship, I want them to send it through. Um, and people, people were getting a little bit... Um, confused, scared, oh, well, what, what do I write? Um, so I was like, what I'll do is I'll bundle it all up and I'll send it, I'll email the customer, per the, sorry, the Microsoft person and send it as an attachment of an Outlook file that they can just double click and then click send. And it's idiot proof. Um, it's not idiot proof. Uh, but I was like, how am I going to... How am I going to generate a, what's it called? Is it an OFT file? No, it's an MSG file, which is an Outlook. It's because we couldn't use .eml, which is the standard email format, because that assumes that it's already been sent and then you can't edit a whole bunch of stuff and I wanted to be able to edit a whole bunch of stuff. 
So I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And I couldn't do it in a logic app. And I was like, damn you, logic apps. But as I sort of mentioned, I'm a developer. And I was like, right, this is the point. This is where I'm going to cut some code. So I found a really cool NuGet package. Um, I'm traditionally a, a .NET person, although I touch everything that's listed on this shirt. Um, so I, I found a cool NuGet package that generates MSG files and it was only like $7 bazillion or something. So I whipped out the corporate Amex and bought that. Uh, and then I wrote this, uh, this cool Azure function, which sits over here. And, oh, I don't think you can see the... I'm not going to be able to edit it in the portal because... It's a compiled, yeah, damn. Um, do I have the code? Probably not. The code is a bunch of C sharp. It's an Azure function that's set up with an HTTP endpoint. What's this? <laughs> um, and it's, you've thrown me off now. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, so it's a bunch of C sharp code. It grabs those variables, it passes it into this library, it generates an MSG file and it hands it back out the other side. So you can actually hit this with a post call uh, independently and you'll get an MSG file spat out the other side using the content that you've passed in. So the way that I handle that is in my logic app, I've got an HTTP call and it calls my crazy function with a key passes in the details that are needed. This was really useful to me because it meant I could actually test the function, do a full end-to-end -end test with the function using, um, you know, HTTP tool of your choice. Uh, I use something called Paw, but if you use, um, now I've forgotten all the HTTP testing functions, but if you use those, you can craft a post message, send through those parameters, uh, and you'll get out the other side, hopefully, a 200 and you get the file at the other end. So I drop that straight into my logic app uh, and it calls it. And then I can send an email. So I send an email that says, your challenge is ready, da 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 da. I CC myself on it just to make sure that nothing goes, uh, goes too skew if. I pass in the body, which I've pulled out of storage before. So I've automated that entire email flow. And if I just jump over to this screen for a second, I might even have, where is it? No, it has not come through. I might run that logic. I'll manually trigger that logic app in a minute. We'll see if it's, it's come through. The final thing I do, logic apps is really cool. Uh, if you're not, if you don't want to write a heap of code, but you want a whole bunch of really interesting um, and useful functionality, not just for triggers, but for outputs and, and connection to different services. So you see I've got a, a BitLink creator here, which is using the out-of-the-box um, Bitly creator, and I pass in the URL at that point. And then the final, very final thing I do is I go and drop it into my list and I set the toolkit URL to be that short. And the reason I put it through Bitly was no particular reason other than the fact that when I was debugging stuff, I was looking at these long URLs and I was like, this will be super easy if they're just that long instead. And so that all plugs together. And if I go to do, 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 this one and we scroll to the very end, it hasn't popped up. So what I'll do is I'll jump in here and I'll just go, I'll do a manual run. So one of the differences, and, and if you're, hooking into something like SharePoint, SharePoint uh, be aware of this, is something like Power Platform will execute straight away. It's like pure pub sub. Um, so if I change something in SharePoint, Power Platform goes, yep, got it, and away we go. When you're doing it with Logic Apps, um, I think under the covers it does polling and it doesn't do polling like super quick. So it's, it's sort of every 15 minutes or something like that. So sometimes I, I sort of find myself, if I'm in a real hurry, I go and I go, oh, why isn't this executed? Um, I then go and um, run, the, uh, run the trigger manually and this will eventually spin up and run. And if we jump back to here, actually I'll go like that, and we should see it pop up in this list. If I keep slamming it with refreshes. 
when was that? 28th. Is that today? No, that's not today. So. Oh man, we're going to have to. You, oh no, here we go. Succeeded. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Let's go and see if this 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 one's updated. Oh, okay. Oh, I know why. We go. Column setting. Uh, no, 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 no. Where's filter by? That's what I want. It's at fifty-one. No, hasn't worked. What that would do, let me show you this. So it creates, we're doing one of these with Ampol at the moment. I don't think that's privileged information, so you can see that. Um, so this is the landing page that it generates. Uh, I've got a link to their actual Cloud Skills Challenge, which opens up there, which begins in 17 hours. Uh, I've got the toolkit, so if I click that, that'll say, hey, do you want to download this? And I will go save. And when I open that, you'll see there's toolkit files here, there's some comms, there's emails, there's Teams templates. I'm in a zip file, so that's... Uh, not ideal. Uh, so there's comms, there's some videos, there's some Teams templates. And so then that gets emailed through to uh, the Microsoft person and says, hey, make sure your customer gets this. They open the email that's attached to that, they hit send, the customer gets it, the challenge starts, the challenge runs. I've done, with the exception of this upfront stuff, I now do nothing. Like, I'm like, cool, I'm going to a meetup to drink some beers. Bye. <laughs> Um, but what I thought was, was kind of cool when, when the guys were like, hey, can you do a presentation like tomorrow with no notice? I was like, hmm, what's, what's going to be interesting? I, I think this is, is what's interesting to me about this is that it's real world. Like as much as we'd all love to sit down on every single project and go file new project and start from scratch, life doesn't work that way. And so we have some sort of process that someone's doing and it's usually some jerk managing something in an Excel spreadsheet and then that evolves and that becomes a SharePoint list and then, well, no, now we've got to have some other bit attached to it. So this is kind of the evolution of me being the jerk managing something in an Excel spreadsheet to moving it to a SharePoint list to how do I build off of that um, so that I don't have to do any real work and I can go and hang out at meetups and, and our customers and, and talk to people about Azure. Are there any questions about that? Because I reckon that's about done. Food and drink is happening outside. We're going to open those doors in a minute and there's going to be some swag and goodies for you. I would be remiss not to do a quick shout out. My, I've got a 13 week old puppy um, who I had to leave in Australia. I'm very sad. He's watching on YouTube. So <laughs> hi, Albie. Um, any questions from anybody?